Good afternoon to all of our guests here at the North American Bear Center and all of our guests tuning in online for our 12.30 broadcast program. Today's bear will hopefully be Holly Bear. She is heading this direction, um, but she's also known for taking the drive-bys and taking off immediately. So we'll see if she chooses to stick around. But we do have um, one of our staff members, Brandon, down front here, and he's got an enrichment for Holly that he's trying to get her to focus on. And she seems a little keen on some other things at the moment, so we'll see. She might just pop up right here on top of the cave. Holly also likes to come through the little wooded area there and arrive at the top of the rock den rather than come around. That is her preferred method of travel. And so you can see her there. That's our, young, our smallest bear at the center, our 10-year-old female Holly. Holly is a native from Arkansas, and so she's not from Minnesota. In fact, none of the bears we have here at the center are from Minnesota. They're all from elsewhere in the country. All the bears were rescued, meaning through no fault of their own, their lives have been intervened with, such as they might have been a pet or under human care too long without their mothers, and uh, they are no longer able to be released into the wild to be wild bears. So um, our facility and similar facilities across the United States are set up to care for animals like this. And that's actually the main reason none of our bears will breed here at the center. We want to save the space we have for more bears like Lucky, Tasha, and Holly here, um, because if we had said no to these bears, their most likely alternative would have been euthanasia. Um, so we want to be able to say yes in those situations rather than no. And if we allowed our bears to breed, we'd quickly be overrun with far too many bears. For those of you at the center today, I will encourage you to check us out, check out Holly um, in the viewing windows or just to the right of the windows, you will see an observation deck that will lead you outside, uh, a staircase rather, that will lead you to the observation deck outside. Um, and you are welcome to check out Holly at either location. I will also let you know that the observation deck um, is probably at least a slightly better option for picture taking as there isn't directly a fence uh, or window in your way. You are able to take uninhibited pictures of the bears. We are also letting our other female out, Tasha. So unfortunately for us here at the center, the three bears we have, they don't all get along. So we can't let them all out to frolic in the flowers because that's typically not what happens when we let all three bears out. So um, some of ours have what we call personality conflicts or just plain they don't get along. And so, although we've tried to introduce them and facilitate them being friends, it doesn't work all the time. So, um, we do rotate the bears out in the main enclosure. The main enclosure is two and a half acres, which is quite large, um, and it also has several uh, private enclosures. This morning, we were doing some work on the main enclosure, so we got all three bears in, and uh, now we're starting to let them out. Holly's the first one to let out, and Holly does spend more time in our main enclosure than the rest of the bears, and there's a very specific reason for that. Holly is the matriarch in the bear world, even though the females are roughly half the size of the males, they are in charge or they are dominant over the males. And there's an important reason for that as well. The reason that the females are dominant over the males is you're a wild male bear. You have one goal in life. That goal is to reproduce. And so the females in the bear world, well, who gets to reproduce and who doesn't at any given year? And so if your only goal is to reproduce and you don't get to decide if you get to or not, you would be... Uh, subordinate to those who make the decisions, which again is those female bears. Holly here happens to be our oldest female, which means Holly owns the entire enclosure. The whole main two and a half acre enclosure is Holly's territory. This first private enclosure down front you can see on the camera is also Holly's territory. And all other four private enclosures are also Holly's territory. She's gracious to allow the other bears to live here, um, but she does regularly remind them um, who's in charge by chasing them around. And sometimes if she deems it fit, she will smack them around. If, again, it's necessary. Um, she identifies misbehaviors in those bears, and she is quick to seek it out. So we like to joke and say, Holly here, she kind of rules with an iron paw. Now you saw her just jump up on uh, the little box here. That's our bear scale. We do weigh the bears on a regular basis to make sure they're hitting target weight goals. Um, our head bear keeper, Sherrod, um, keeps track of every single year in the past of where the bears are at with weight at what time of the year. And so this time of the year, she wants the bears to be at a certain level, and uh, we'll adjust their food intake accordingly. Now, you may notice there's a very light strip of brown along Holly's back. Um, she's been digging lately. All right, so the bears get the option of their, of their uh, excuse me, sorry, I just, we just let Tasha out, and I heard that she just went right back into her personal enclosure over the radio, which made me laugh a little bit uh, because, uh, again, we give her access to the main enclosure, and she's like, yeah, I'll stay put. Um, so she may show up, she may not, but it sounds like she's hanging around her personal enclosure, even though Tasha also now has access. Um, but, again, we will adjust those um, 
those uh, bear dives accordingly. And then right now, our bears are preparing their den. So we do have eight man-made caves in the enclosure, rock den, so to speak, that the bears can use, and we're happy if they use those. Also, we allow the two female bears to make their own den if they should show choose. Uh, the reason for that is exactly that. Females tend to be a little more picky. And I'm talking about bears. I'm not going to make any suggestions about humans. But um, the female bears, they usually give birth in their winter den. So they have a much more motherly instinct about making that den in terms of how safe it is and how well done it is. And so for that reason, they put a lot more effort. Some wild male bears are known to just find a divot in the forest floor, lay down in it, let the snow cover them. That might be all the effort they put into winter dormancy. So, again, significantly more effort put in by the females. Holly here, the brown on her back, we actually are pretty sure is dirt. Um, she's been digging quite regularly. And yesterday, we got a chance to get all the bears in again and go and scope out the two and a half acres and try to find where that den is. And we're pretty confident we, did, we were able to find it. Um, there was a fresh spot of dirt um, with a nice, small, shallow hole right next to it. It's not quite finished as, um, you know, you can only stick a couple feet in there right now. But um, when Holly is finished, it will be nice and sized to her size. Now, the bears want something that is similar size to them and what space their offspring will take up because they will end up heating the space within that den inadvertently. And so if it's a large cave that has two bedrooms and a bathroom, you know, that's a lot of wasted energy that they're going to end up heating with. If it's really small and tight to their size, again, that's less space they actually have to heat with their own body heat. Now, bears don't go through what we would say is a true hibernation. Technically speaking, what they do in the winter, scientifically, would be considered more of a torpor than an actual hibernation. We don't consider bears to be true hibernators, and that is for two distinct reasons. A, they do give birth in that winter den, and they are active. So let's compare that to a true hibernator, like a chipmunk, for example. Chipmunks are true hibernators. They go into a deep, deep sleep for most of the winter. They may wait every two to three weeks to eat some food that they've cached, um, but they're in a mostly completely dormant state. So if we were to knock on the den of a chipmunk, so to speak, in the winter, there would be no answer. We could break in, take the chipmunk out, pass it around, taking pictures with it, put it back. It probably wouldn't know we were there. All right, now, if you did that same thing to the bear's den, they would be there to greet you, and they wouldn't be too happy with you either because they do not like being disturbed during that winter dormancy. In addition, the bear's body temperature is actually very high. So most hibernating mammals, again, such as the chipmunk, its internal body temperature will be around 40 degrees Fahrenheit the entire winter. It might, again, spike a little bit at those times when it gets up to eat the food. But again, its average temperature is around 40 degrees. That's unreasonably cold. Um, and that's what makes a true hibernator. The definition of hibernation is a controlled state of hypothermia. Well, the bears, they only drop their internal body temperature by about 12 degrees. So right now, Holly, Lucky, and Tasha, their body temperatures internally are probably floating right around 100 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the average resting body temperature for a black bear. Now, in the wintertime, it might get as low as 88 degrees. That is not significant whatsoever, and that's what allows the bears to be active, unlike true hibernators. Their body systems do shut down, um, but their actual temperature is kept high, allowing them to arouse really easily and readily if they so choose. Now, Holly has since made it down to what we call the stand-up feeder, and folks, they are on the deck. Feel free to migrate down to her. Um, we put a bunch of food in there, and you get to kind of see a pretty close-up view of her. Uh, just make sure you hold on to those cell phones tight. If you haven't noticed yet, they will fit right through the cracks of the deck. Um, the deck was built 10-plus years ago, and then the size of cell phones um, turned back. And so uh, it wasn't really built with that in mind. Holly is known for crushing cell phones, so keep that in mind. Keep a nice grip with your cell phones if you're taking pictures. She will not hesitate to ruin one of your phones should it enter her territory. And we do say that with experience. Holly has at least four phones that she has crushed. So uh, her, her phone body count is pretty high. And, again, she's just not super fond of electronics, so she will take advantage of those things if they get dropped into her enclosure. I'm going to take a brief pause and see if anybody has any questions for Holly or Bears in general um, while we're live on the broadcast. Great question. How many bears can our center handle? Um, we are licensed to have 11 bears. Now, um, we have federal and state licensing. Uh, we would never put 11 bears in this particular enclosure. Um, the three we have, and already having those personality conflicts, adding another single one to that mix involves a lot of work on our end and a lot of resources. So say our personal capacity would be five because that's how many personal enclosures we have here at the center. Um, so we would never take most likely more than five without building at least a new or another or an addition to this enclosure. Good question. Thank you. Any other questions for Holly or Bates in general? 
How often do bears need rescuing? That is a really good question, and it comes, there's a lot of uh, factors in that question. So um, it kind of depends on what you would consider needs to be rescued. Now, keep in mind as well, um, different states um, have different guidelines for what constitutes a nuisance bear and then a rescued bear and all this stuff as well. So what might constitute a bear that needs rescued here in Minnesota might not be the same for a bear in Wisconsin or Maine or wherever you are in the United States. Um, so, or even in Canada or Mexico where they also have black bears. So it really depends. Um, in, Minis or in the United States, like, so for example, most of our bears, they were pets at one point. Um, same with our previous bears. Um, so um, they just, you know, those people typically have good intentions and it's an orphan they find and they want to do what's best for it, knowing that if they don't intervene, it'll probably die, which unfortunately usually is probably the best answer, but they try to, you know, care for it and then let it go. Now that bear's somewhere between perfectly wild and perfectly tame and which actually makes them far less predictable than a wild bear so um, those are the bears that we need homes for so i wouldn't say super often and with more people visiting the center they'll learn not to do that um and then we can get our message out and the bears will remain wild but um i, I wouldn't say often um it's probably pretty low um since i've worked here which has been about almost six years we've had a f maybe one or two legitimate opportunities to take on a new bear we just weren't able to do so the one time we already had four and we only had four private enclosures so we couldn't and the other time, um, we had uh, we had availability or space, but it was two bears that came together, and we could only house the one, so we had to say no. It was a combo deal. You had to take them both or none. So it doesn't happen very often, no. Any other questions for black bears? And Tasha has just arrived off to our left, and she's actually doing a very specific behavior. She's what, doing what we call stomp walking. So you notice her, her steps are very, very direct in particular, and she puts a little extra weight with each step. Um, what she's doing is she's making a very large imprint in the ground, and she'll also dribble a little bit of urine typically into those spots. She's claiming a section of territory for herself. Now, that'll not make Holly very happy. In fact, as soon as Holly's found all the food down here, you might see that she's going to go and uh, kind of remind Tasha that that's not her to do, hers to do. That's the behavior that Holly should be doing as the matriarch. So um, you might get to see some interactions. Now, now, these two do get along. They do still get into squabbles and fights occasionally, but they can settle their differences among themselves with each other. So we do allow that. Um, our other male, Lucky, he gets a little too aggressive with Tasha, so he cannot have direct interaction with her. We will give Tasha an enrichment if she comes down, but again, because uh, she's not the matriarch and she very much knows her place at the North American Bear Center, probably won't come down with Holly guarding the front area as she is. But as soon as Holly has dictated that, all right, there's no more good food for her down here and she's ready to leave, she will most likely go over to where we just saw Tasha doing that blocking, and she'll do kind of one of two things. She'll either re-stomp it for herself um, and then go seek out Tasha and, again, chase her down and kind of remind her, hey, this is my territory. You don't do that here. Or um, – they just let it slide. I highly doubt she'll let it slide. And this is a regular behavior we see between our two females. They both do want territories, but in the bear world, the females have territories, the males have a home range, the difference being the size and how it's defended. A female actively defends every making sure that all the food within it goes to her and her offspring. If she's allowing other bears to get that food or other animals even, um, that could lead to negative negative implications down the line for her and her offspring. A male chooses to have such large home range that it's specifically too large to be defensible. And he allows himself to be bossed around by the females that also might take parts of his home range and call them territories. And so that season, when it comes around, he has a bunch of different options that he appeals to their better nature, so to speak, and that he allows him to be bossed around by those females. So it looks like Holly went back to that stand-up feeder, cleaned it out, and now she's prowl again. Uh, she might just be going for a drink of water next, but we'll see what she does when she finds out Tasha has been marking and scenting that area for herself. It looks like Tasha maybe dissipated back into the woods there, um, but keep an eye over there. It's not super heavily vegetated. She'll probably have to pass by view again before she can make it to the back of the enclosure. So if you can't see her now, you may get to see her when she decides to head back. So it looks like Holly was just getting a quick drink, and uh, we'll see what she does next. But I'm going to go ahead and start to uh, wrap up our broadcast here with just a couple of things to leave you with. First and foremost, this one, everybody here at the center today that came here, all of you had to pay an admission price to be here. We're very appreciative of that. We are a nonprofit uh, organization. All 
money we get to run this center comes from that admission price you pay today, donations. Um, we don't receive any federal or state funding of any kind. So thank you so much for being willing to spend some time and money with us today. We very much appreciate it. And the Bears do as well, and I know they can't thank you, so I will do it on their behalf. Whether they already expressed it or not, um, they thank you because they know you're the one that paid for the food. So thank you for coming in and helping giving us, the Bears, some tr- um, we have to enrichment out there for Holly. Um, it's a slightly different one, so we call this one a donut. It's not the type of donuts humans like to eat in the morning. It's just a plastic one, but it has holes in it, and we filled it with more food items. So she has to manipulate it to get those food items out. That causes a mental exercise for her. We want bears that are not only physically fit, but also mentally fit. If you don't make them use their brains here in captivity, they will eventually turn to mush. We call that a captive psychosis, and we don't want our bears to have negative mental problems. So um, what we do is we do enrichments to help stimulate that brain activity. I um, mean, it does exactly that and keeps them healthy um, upstairs, so to speak. Lastly, I'd like to thank anyone who's viewing online. So just a reminder to the folks here today, if you want to check up on the Bears and you can't make it back up to Ely, no sweat. You can check us out online. That's bear.org. That has to be one of the easiest websites to remember. We have live cameras all over the enclosure, and we do a live program every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, which is this broadcast program on the pond cam um, where we get the bears down front and give them some enrichment and things like that for your viewing pleasure and for viewing pleasure as well because we like to teach here at the North American Bear Center. So um, thank you for those of you tuning in online today. Some of those people tune in from all over the world to watch our broadcast. So if you're interested, um, visit us online at bear.org. And while you're there, you may as well leave us a review. Uh, a bear center uh, review for the bear center goes a really long way for you folks. Um, and for us here, um, advertising is a pretty low uh, budget item of ours. We don't have a ton of money to spend there. So word of mouth and those reviews um, go a really long way. So if you haven't yet and you're interested in uh, supporting the center, um, leaving a review or just telling your friends and family about us goes a really long way for us. So those of you who are planning to do so, thank you so much. And those of you who have already done it, thank you so much. We do appreciate those reviews and that feedback. All righty, well, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. Again, my name is Spencer. Thanks for coming out to our broadcast today and coming to the center to see the bears and learn about them. Um, the next bear tour will go out at the top of the hour, and we'll meet by those large viewing windows downstairs in the bleacher-style seating, and we'll give a 10-minute and a 5-minute and a final call for that program for those of you who haven't gone outside to see the other bears yet. And with that, um, everybody, have a happy Friday and a great weekend.